This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and uh, when you're done a perfect fake emulsification and you're just thinking to implant the lens and get over the case and when something like this happens it's really heartbreaking. So this is yet another case where the haptic has got amputated. Now let's try to understand how to manage this. This is a situation which most phaco surgeons are likely to experience in their professional career. The cause might be anything the most common being improper loading. However, it's a situation where most phaco surgeons have to be prepared for. So let's try to go in step by step how to manage such a situation. The first point here is whenever you have an amputated haptic it's a definite indication for eye oil exchange so we can't afford to put a blind eye on this and then leave the lens there we need to remove it point number 1 the second point would be when you're trying to explant the lens what are the structures which are vulnerable to get damaged during the intraocular maneuvering number 1 the corneal endothelium is going to take a hit number 2 the rectus margin can take a hit and number 3 the posterior capsule itself can get damaged so we need to keep all these three things in mind so what are the options which we have so the one option would be just to enlarge the incision just a bit and pull out the entire lens using the twisting method you just twist the eye wall and pull it out it might be tricky in an hydrophobic lens if it is slightly bulky and it has become a little bit rigid in softer lenses and thinner lenses it is quite possible the second option which is a traditional one is to just cut the lens into two or three parts and then pull it out the third the more novel way to do it is use the ultrasonic cutter which is devised by dr neha dolakia of course the fourth option would be that if you are not experienced with either of them please don't hesitate to create a small scleral tunnel incision of about 4 and 1/2 mm 5 mm and pull the lens in toto out that also is perfectly fine just like how we do erysiceus so there's no need to panic at all now moving on to the technique which i'm going to demonstrate in this case is going to be cutting the lens into two halves by using a scissors and let's try to understand this maneuver step by step the lens is maneuvered into the anterior chamber and it's aligned in this position we want to create space within the chamber and it has to be maintained so it's ideal that we should use a combination of maybe a dispersive ovd on back of the cornea and then put in sodium hyaluronate or cohesive ovd in the anterior chamber so that the chamber can be maintained well we can just use the cohesive ovd alone itself that also is fine uh, using hpmc alone might be a little bit tricky because when you're trying to maneuver the scissors inside the eye there's always a risk of the chamber becoming shallow and this makes the other structures vulnerable to get damaged so in this case i'm using the sodium hyaluronate and the instrument which i'm going to use to cut it is this tooth scissors i think it's called the hoshers lens cutting scissors and i got it from epsilon india there's another pair of scissors along with the forceps Uh, which is uh, manufactured by MST but they're very expensive so i usually prefer to manage with the combination of this scissors and a sinski hook when you're introducing the scissors into the eye it's important that the scissors are closed and then enter into the eye and just to prevent the lens from jumping up the lens is stabilized with the second instrument and once the scissor is into the anterior chamber the mouth is open so that it engages the optic What is strikingly visible here is that we am seeing multiple corneal folds. Now it is suggesting that the eye has become a little bit softer. The OVD is probably escaped out and the chamber would be shallow. So it would not be very wise on my part to go ahead and do the cutting process because I saw this and it's uncomfortable. I didn't go full thickness through and through I just cut it and then came out. The idea was to go and replenish the ovd from the chamber remember the basic principle of surgery is always to ensure that all the anatomical parts are in their normal position so whenever we see there's a compromise come back and get into a situation where everything is in the right place so the ovd is put in now now you can see the cornea is taut the interchamber is well formed and now we've got enough space to maneuver uh, the instruments 
So let's now begin the lens cutting process. Uh, observe the left hand. The left hand has a sense cube. It has just gone in and hooked the quit of the lens. And now with the scissors, I'm traversing across the entire length of the lens, reaching the distal end and then cutting. The second instrument helps us in such a way that the lens is prevented from jumping out. So the lens is now cut into two full halves and now is the time to pull them out individually. Again, sodium hyaluronate is placed into the antechamber and also in the bag. So now is the time to orient these two halves of the lenses in the appropriate way before pulling them out. So let me take a moment to highlight the orientation of the haptic. The haptic which comes out, I would always want it to be on the right side with its convexity on the right side. Now this half of the lens is oriented in the perfect way which I would like. So when I pull out the lens, there is no entanglement of the haptic in the wound, just comes out easily and it does. Now at the remaining second half you can see, the orientation is not preferable. So again, I go in and rotate the haptic in such a way that the haptic comes to the right side with its convexity being to the right side. So again, the lens is held with the forceps and pulled out effortlessly. Now this is a six millimeter lens, which has come out in two pieces in a 2.8 millimeter incision. So let me pause here and show you the forceps. This forceps is the vertically opening Daljit Singh forceps. And uh, of course you can use the McPherson forceps as well, but I prefer this over the other one. Following these strategies, one can explant an IOL in a very stress-free manner without doing any collateral damage to the other structures like the cornea or the capsule bag. So the replacement lens is ready. Again, it's loaded carefully and then implanted. One of the more common reasons why the trailing haptic gets stuck and gets torn is because the plunger usually overrides the trailing haptic. Whenever that happens, the trailing haptic gets stuck between the plunger and the floor of the cartridge and gets cut. So please ensure that while loading, the plunger is behind the haptic, not over it. The lens is maneuvered into the bag. OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. That's it. The case is done. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.